Hi, I'm Susan Jabinski with Morningstar.com. Berkshire Hathaway held its annual meeting over the weekend, virtually. Here with me to discuss some key takeaways from the event is Greg Warren. Greg is a sector strategist in Morningstar's Financial Services Group, and he specializes in Berkshire Hathaway. Greg, thank you so much for being with me today. Thanks for having me. So um, let's start with the tone of the meeting and um, uh, tell us a little bit about your impression of the tone and the fact that Berkshire didn't seem to do a lot of buying uh, during the market downturn. Yeah, it was it was kind of interesting. It was probably the most uh, um, reserved I think I've I've seen Buffett um, historically. Um, I, I think it's just the nature of the pandemic. I, I think it's created so much uncertainty. Um, not just within you know the economy and the markets, but for Berkshire itself a- across the spectrum of businesses. I mean, on the insurance side of the business, they don't typically write a lot of insurance along these lines. You know, you know, he did note during the, the the meeting that they would do it if the price was right, and the price has never been right. But he's concerned about potential litigation hitting a lot of insurance companies where this stuff was excluded and the argument could be made that, well, we didn't shut down because of the pandemic. We shut down because the government told us to. So I, I, I think that he's concerned that, you know, at least for the next three to five years, there's going to be a lot of potential litigation related to the insurance business um, within their own operating companies. I mean, the, the railroad business is going to have a, you know, a, a big impact in the next couple of quarters here, just because of the recession and the, 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 the pullback overall in demand. Uh, within the MSR segment, you know, precision cast parts is probably going to feel some pain because, you know, the the airline industries are are really probably going to take at least another three years before they get back to sort of, you know, last year levels. Um, he did note, you know, early on before he even started taking questions that Berkshire blew out all their stakes in the airlines. You know, all four companies, they owned about 10 percent of each and he, he, he blew them out because, he just felt that it was going to take a very long time for them to get back to sort of normal. And that in the meantime, they're taking on a ton of debt and you know, likely, you know, the likelihood of you know, secondary offerings and, and potentially you new know, issues of warrants, things that are dilutive you know, to shareholders in the long run. And he just felt it's better to get out of the way at this point. But you know, as far as re- purchases go, I mean, they picked up some bank, some additional bank stock. Um, you know, during the first quarter, we'll, we'll we'll get more details as as the 13F comes out later this month. But just based on Form Four filings that we've seen, they did pick up or you know uh, increase stakes in some of the banks. So when you net it out, um, I, I think it it ended up being around six and a half billion um, in net sales. So one headline that you know was was coming up while the meeting was was going on was really you know Buffett talking about eliminating that airline stake you know is that something that surprised you it definitely goes along with sort of that um conservative um stance and sort of tone that he had for much of the meeting but what's what's your what's your take on that it it didn't really surprise us because we've never been big fans of that stake to begin with um you know, we gave we gave him some grief you know 2 years ago at the annual meeting actually 2017 so three years ago, um, right after they purchased them, it just didn't seem like the type of business they would be investing in. I mean, unlike the railroad, which you know has a lot of advantages, a lot of barriers to entry, uh, a lot of potential to pass on fuel increases um, to customers, the airlines just didn't seem to be in that position. And it, the argument at the time was made that, well, they've consolidated over the last 15, 20 years, they're better run, they can get through these boom and bust cycles better. And my retort to that was, well, they're only ever one oil price shock, you know, either to the upside or the downside away from having a big problem. On the upside, it would just be that they're not able to pass those costs along to consumers. On the downside is the cheaper oil is, the more price competition you start having within the industry. So we were never big fans to begin with. We always kind of looked as a trade. Um, It just seemed like they didn't get out when they should have. Um, I mean, he's, he, he still talked about how he liked the firms and he liked the companies and liked what they were doing. Um, but it, you know, we've always sort of responded to clients in the past about, you know, if, if Buffett buys an airline, which one would he buy? And I'm like, well, I'd prefer he bought none of them because I just think it's a bad business overall. 
And then lastly, one question that you and a lot of us had going into the meeting was, you know, wondering about if um, Buffett and, and Charlie had repurchased any of Berkshire's stock during the, the market downturn. And it looks like there was some activity, but then they sort of put on the brakes sort of the beginning of March, around March 10th, I believe. What, what do you make of that? Yeah, well, I was kind of surprised. I mean, it, it, when you look at it on a net basis, there was about 1.7 billion that got back bought back during the quarter, which is which is decent. I mean, we we feel that you know they could do a one and a half to two and a half billion run rate um, w- without any real issues. What surprised us was you know when we got the the the, the 10 Q was that they stopped buying after March 10th. So between March 10th and the end of March, they bought back no shares at all, and that was really when Berkshire was trading at its cheapest value. And I think the other jaw-dropping moment we had was during the annual meeting when he put up the the slide that showed that they bought nothing back in April. So for basically six, seven weeks there, they've not bought back any stock at a time when arguably Berkshire has been trading at some of its cheapest price levels in a very long time. Now, he, he did mention during the meeting that he feels like the intrinsic value has come down as much as the stock has come down year to date, which is about 19%. Um, I'm not sure how much of that is you know, his guesstimates on the business or how much it is him sort of pushing out the margin of safety he'd like to see before he steps back in. Um, we took the, the fair value down early April about, you know, assumes about 11 percent um, based upon sort of the impact we felt was going to you know, be on the equity portfolio and then a lot of the operating companies. Um, you know, we did some quick back of the envelope tweaks to the model, you know, as they were running through the annual meeting. And there could be a little bit more that could come out of it, but it, it just doesn't seem like it's it's sort of at the level that he's looking at it, which sort of to us sort of, you know, sets the stage that maybe he's, um, given the amount of uncertainty that we're likely to see over the next, you know, six to 18 months, that he's looking for an even lower value than, than what, what he's seeing right now to step in. Now, on a price to book basis, you know, based on the, the end of the first quarter, it was trading a little bit over 1.2 times. And if you look at sort of our forecast for end of this year, end of next year, it's at 1.1 to 1.2 times, which is really, really cheap. Um, so I think, you know, as far as long term investors go, I don't think they're going to be disappointed if they step into it here you know, over the next you know, five to 10 years. You know, the near term might be lumpier, might be painful because, again, you know, I think Buffett's sort of expecting some of the gains we saw in April in the markets to sort of be given back. But but I think from from a longer term perspective, I, I can't see a cheaper price point um, than we're seeing right now in the last, say, five, 10 years. Greg, thank you so much for your insights today. We appreciate it and we look forward to seeing your ongoing research on Berkshire over time. Thanks for having me. I'm Susan Jabinski for Morningstar.com. Thank you for tuning in.